ati Allah ati Rasul Qulul Amri Minkum <coughs> and it was a reminder from myself Ana Abdul Ajisu Da'ifu Miskeenu Zalimu Jihad and but for the grace of Allah that we're still in existence alhamdulillah. InshaAllah what do we have for questions? We've covered so many subjects inshaAllah we see what, what people have on their minds inshaAllah. As alaykum Sayyidi Wa alaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah There was a few questions similar, similar. Um, when people make novels with different worlds and characters does Allah Zawajal also manifest those example Harry Potter, Narnia etc. Didn't they ask that last time? Yeah inshaAllah whatever there's not a Harry Potter per se Harry Potter but again the concept is, is, is very simple that we cannot conjure or think of or imagine that which doesn't exist, we are not that powerful. Everything already must be within Allah's creation and it's just a memory within us that we are allowed to bring this imagination up. So there must be something similar to these realities. So there are places in which animals talk, there are places in which people have magic and witchcraft and, and doing all sorts of different things. So whatever we are able to conjure into a movie, into a book, into whatever, into a drawing, we can't make what doesn't exist. We're not creators, Allah is the creator and Allah gives us these memory banks or abilities to recall and bring something into its manifestation. So that has to be the basic understanding. So there's never a point in which we can make or draw or imagine something that does not exist. Because then you become the creator and, and then what role does Allah play in this? So it's just common sense, everything has to already have been created by Allah and we are just bringing it up within our software, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh, this is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream, every bit counts. As Salaamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Wa Alaikum As Salaam Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh. Sayyidi you had mentioned that the angels that come to clean can look like dark shadowy figures. How to know the difference if it's not jinns? Yeah, you can't. <laughs> so it means that spectrum of light of malaika can't be seen. So what appears to be like a shadow because you don't have the faculties and the ability to see them. And then that state of a conscious state. So these are people whom if they close their eyes while meditating or at night and they may see shadowy like uh, images because it's not meant to be seen and if they are jinn then they're doing whatever Allah wants of them, of their work or purification or du'as. And if they are of a bad intention then you'll understand it in the feelings and the energy that they're giving if they're attacking or they're… whatever they're trying to do, 
inshallah. Assalamu alaikum Sayyidi Wa alaikum salam Thank you for the talks which enlighten our day. Um, Sayyidi, how is it possible to forget past things if others keep reminding us of the same? How to forget past things that people remind? I don't think you can forget as the ability to forget something is, is not not necessary, anything good shaitan makes you forget. <clears throat> the state of forgetfulness is something we want to overcome and that's why the shaykhs and those whom trained by shaykhs they forget nothing but they forgive and the reality of forgiveness and forgetfulness are completely separate. When you forget and shaitan makes you forget what you did wrong and then you keep repeating it and you forget that, oh I'm not going to do this and you do it. You forget, I'm not going to say that and you say it. But when a wrong is done you don't really ever forget the wrong but the state of forgiveness is important. So the shaykhs forget nothing. So. It's not a matter of forgetting but it's the state of forgiveness that's powerful. That to remember the incident and what, what people have done but to forgive. And that forgetfulness helps them from continuously repeating. So it's also something good because when you don't forget you don't try to repeat that same incident. And when you don't forget you become very conscious and aware of what people do and that they have the potential of doing that again. You can forgive but at least you're not falling into the same trap a second time, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Shaykh Nur John Wa Alaikum As Salaam Alaikum Hoping you're well, please forgive our bad manners. Uh, Sayyidi, when we're, I've been wearing the Naqshbandi Taweez since joining, thank you. However, I'm also wearing another Taweez which I've had for years and has helped me protection from ghosts. Shaykh Nurjan, should I take that Taweez off as it's not Naqshbandi? I'm a bit reluctant as I know how hard life was before. Yeah, if it makes you comfortable then, you know, continue whatever has your comfort and your, your own psychological comfort because you can take it off and through your own psychosis begin to feel something's wrong and it's not wrong because you put your faith and trust into something, you believe in it and to take that away then can cause a problem. The general concern is that when people start mixing and matching everything they're not, they're not, they're not sure what's working for them and why something difficult is coming if they're supposedly following. So each one is going to have an individual excuse, but it's very important to me and then you know they do that. But the general rule is that when you come to this level of training and this level of teaching it's important to try not and try our best not to mix other practices and, and other understandings. Because then when we have a problem we don't know where that problem is arising from. It's like a formula in chemistry or a formula in cooking and you're putting the ingredients in and something comes out wrong. Well then how do we go back and correct it when we don't know what the ingredients was? People start to do an old rod but then they're carrying on with a, a different old rod. They begin to add different recitations. They begin to have different practices and that's where the problem is. But again it's individual and everybody has free will to do whatever works for them. If it works then alhamdulillah you know it's working for you. <coughs> if it begins not to work and there begins to have difficulty then we go back and try to retrace our steps and say that if I'm following this guide then I'll continue with what the guide is giving to me, inshaAllah.
Assalamu alaikum, dear Saidi. Wa alaikum salam. Uh, thank you so much for answering previous questions last week. It has been a tremendous guidance. Can you tell us a little more about how to guard against and correct ourselves when we feel we are exhibiting signs of a spiritual ego? Should we just continue to negate ourselves as nothing and focus on our grave as a means to overcome this? Yeah, to the best of our ability, we, we try to negate the self and try to do our salawats, do our practices and it, it's not something subtle. So it, it's something very obvious. When, when somebody thinks their ego is like subtly doing things, the, the truth is the ego has big steps and leaves a big footprint. So the issues that come out is when we get angered, when we get agitated, when we become a aggravated and when we try to show ourselves, impress you know others by, by ourselves. It's the bigger steps that one should be focusing on, not thinking that you know the, the ego does a, a subtle dance with them and that those are the subtleties to be worried about, it's the big issues. That people become extremely angry, extremely agitated, very aggressive and it doesn't take much for them to exhibit that state. And those are the dangers that take people out of disbelief and that that's what uh, is the danger that we're trying to sort of address and to work on and to identify, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Sayyidi Wa Alaikum As Salaam Wa Rahmatullah Sayyidi Alhamdulillah with your du'as finally landed uh, my dream job. However, with the recent world events, I've come to find out that the company stands with the oppressors. Should I quit my job? I'm not sure if my income is halal. Can you please guide? Yeah, Alhamdulillah, that you have to meditate. Ooh. We're not here to take people's path, we're only here to teach the path. Everyone has to judge for themselves that their internal oppressor is uh, this or the out uh, external oppressor and where is their place where there is no oppressor and uh, uh, what company now is, is not an oppressor, where shall we derive our food from, uh, manna and quail? If you really want true heavenly sustenance, we're going to need Allah to start sending it. Until then, seek your heart and meditate and contemplate. If you find doubt in what your, you know, is your potential earnings, then alhamdulillah give uh, big in charity and clean it. So alhamdulillah, these are, these are not times again to to, you know I think we, we're getting lost with these little twigs and we're getting hit with big branches. And that becomes the, the, the funniness is we're tiptoeing through this forest and, and ouch, ouch, the splinters are hurting us but meanwhile you, we're getting hit in the head with a big branch. So something happening on this earth and it's happening very fast. And uh, it's best to make sure that you have your connection, that you put aside what needs to be put aside for your family, that you have the abilities, you have everything in line, that your family understands, that they've been taught, they know how to meditate, they know how to contemplate, they know how to you know stay within their homes, don't go out and, and participate with shaitan on the streets, those are the big issues. So the other ones uh, maybe not so significant. If you have the ability to earn money and with that money you can support greatly then alhamdulillah support and, and make Allah to be pleased with you that you took from them and purified them. Allah says, take from them and purify them, means take from their money and do good deeds and charity. 
So alhamdulillah that whatever we try to do keep the focus of the bigger problem that's in front of us. And the small issues you know we can address those later when everybody's sitting in a cave and, and you know wondering what they want to eat. But until that point there's big issues coming and that our lives and our families and everything is prepared for those issues inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Rahmatullah See last week you mentioned about nafs taking deep roots inside the soul and holding it as a prisoner. How can we free our soul completely from nafs? No death. <laughs> that's when Allah guides you to the tariqahs because that's what we were trying to describe, you know that, oh what's the blessing of tariqah? Then people say, oh if you accompany them the du'as open your, your, your prayers, your money, your dunya, your whatever you were praying for. But that's not the reality of tariqah, that may be just the tip that some people understand. The bulk of the reality of tariqah is the preparation for the hereafter, it is the way of the mouth, it's the way of death. It's the way to prepare for death and the stations of death, the difficulties of the grave and to achieve the stations of the hereafter which are the eternal journey. So tariqahs help us and facilitate for us those realities and that's the importance is that we came to tariqahs to understand, to meditate, to contemplate all the zikrs, the associations, all the energy practices give a power to my soul and burn my nafs. And then we gave other talks on who's sitting on your authority, that's how you'll understand who you are. If you say it to myself, I'll stop right now and think, ah, uh, what will be my condition in the grave tomorrow? I die tonight and tomorrow they start my questioning. Well it's very easy because who was sitting on your chair in your life? <clears throat> when you get angry who sits on your chair? Your nafs and you start fighting everyone or your soul and you forgive people. You know the choices that you make in life under stress and duress shows you who you are. Not the choices when everything's great, when people don't like you what's the choice that you make? When, when things are difficult what's the choice that you make? When things are, are confusing who's sitting on your authority to make that choice? If you can answer back that, I think it was my soul because when people harmed me I stayed quiet. When people ridiculed me from big people I stayed quiet. Although I have an ability to cause harm I chose not to. So those are the actions of the soul and some people you know they have other choices. So if in their life when when life gives them difficulties, who's reacting? Their nafs and shaitan. If it's shaitan then you're outright in flames. So you know if everybody if you come back and answer yourself, you know in every stressful moment in life I did all these sort of shaitani type characters, then you're outright in difficulty in the grave. So you don't need much you know examples for that. We say, no, when difficulty came I was kind of thumma amanu, thumma kafaru that oh, sometimes I acted like a believer but sometimes I probably acted like, no, a disbeliever. Then you can say, okay maybe there's going to be a little bit of difficulty and some cleansing in the grave. And that's what's important, it's not under peaceful and happy days. You know the greatest uh, example of, of faith that the world is seeing is that in a people whom are completely, completely being obliterated all they can do is praise Allah All they can do is praise Allah And that's astonishing. And in our lives if at the face of every difficulty that return to Allah 
because we were supposed to have loved Prophet more than we loved ourselves. And the Muhammadan light within us should give us a character that Allah would be pleased with. That in the face of every difficulty we praised Allah very difficult. In the face of every agitation and aggravation is to run to Allah So let the believers put their faith and trust in Allah These are the exemplatory characters that tariqahs wish to achieve and strive to achieve for their students. That's why you have to put all the talks together to get to a point. We said that who sits on the chair? If at that moment you can govern your life and say, well who really sits on my chair when it's hard and when it's heated and when it's hot? And in life when I'm making choices, am I going up on my elevator or going down? Am I trying to give myself more excuses to expose myself and to expose my, my, my body to the world and expose myself to the world and trying to please people and, and uh, be likened by more people and I'm taking the elevator down, down, down? Or am I taking my elevator up and I say, I really don't give a damn about the people. My concern is only in Allah and His Rasul and you press your elevator going up and you make more choices that are popular with the heavens than with the earth and you press your elevator and you're going up. So all of these talks they have to come together like a tasbih and that's why you watch them, watch them, watch them, watch them meditate. Then. When we start to see explosions those talks should be self-evident and you should have gotten to a point in life where these answers come to you naturally. There was a preparation for these days, inshaAllah. As Sayyidi. We are in continuous need of your nazar and guidance, Sayyidi. Mm. Sayyidi, about being a nuk, one of your previous sahbah you mentioned what you focus on focuses on you. Sayyidi, please guide on how one can focus being nothing and stay focused on nothingness. Yeah, that's the whole path, Sayyidi. These, these questions are like philosophy questions. That's the whole path. The whole path is to be a no. We just described it, focus on your death, focus on the grave, focus on the condition of your grave, focus on right now who sits on your chair 80%, 90% of the time and will your condition be good? And every time you want to give an answer to somebody, every time you want to exhibit a, a bad characteristic, understand that that's going to affect the condition of the grave. And everything in our life now is becoming closer and closer to the Bird Box movie where the energies make people go crazy, they exhibit very bad characteristics. And that's the danger, they want to begin to distance themselves from realities. And in essence basically shaitan playing with them and taking them to be alone with shaitan and then to destroy them. So we said distancing ourselves from pious people and the path is uh, distancing ourselves from Allah's rahmah and mercy. Especially in, in difficult days when people will be forced to make choices that are difficult for themselves and for their souls. And Allah gives the tariqah as a rahmah and a mercy, as a means towards Allah's rahmah and mercy and brings down this merciful emanations upon the souls of people whom follow the tariqahs and follow the, this path of love towards Prophet so that we can traverse the difficulty of this dunya. 
This dunya is like uh, moving through a landmine where you don't know where something is planted and you step on it and you're in trouble. Now traversing this earth and what to say, what to do, how to do it, it's not as easy as you just want to run through the field. Inevitably if you run through the field you're going to step on something and you're going to have big, big problems. The world becomes more difficult, requires wisdom and that wisdom is to follow these awliya, follow their guidance to traverse. There's a mine over there, step to the left. There's a mine over there, now step to the right. And their movement traverses through this path of difficulty because it's already written by Allah But you have to be with Nabeen, Siddiqeen, Shuhadaihu Salihin and you have to ati Allah, ati Rasulu, Ulul Amri Minkum. And that gives us that guidance and the coordinates because Allah knows where the minds are, it's been written in Allah's program. And that becomes the rahmah and the mercy in the last days, how to traverse a, a, a very difficult earth with the earth and its inhabitants with very bad intentions, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Wa Alaikum Salaam Sayyidi, back in the old ages people used the stars to navigate. Do the awliya help people navigate by lighting up their path home with stars? Well, we talked about that many times the Prophet described that, follow my companions, they're like stars on a dark night. So this whole way of meditating is to reach towards your star. That's in the lataif of the qalb on how to open up the house of Allah and how to open up the heart of the servant which will become a, a najm, a star. So definitely as the world becomes darker these people whom meditate and connect to the heart of Prophet is a power source, they're going to be luminous beings in a very dark, dark earth. That's when we described before, I don't know if these are people coming on new but we, we've described that. That's when we talked about the lamps and nobody really asked any questions about that. Our life was to be a lamp, everyone was created to be a lamp. If you're the favorite lamp, the most beautific lamp, you're the most elegant lamp, you're the wealthiest lamp. The only question that Allah is going to ask you is, did you give light? Huck. So if we're all created just to be lamps then we were created to give light. Light gives hope and guidance to people because the earth and this world is a zulm. Oppression and darkness are the same words in Arabic. So means it's everything is darkness because this is the abode of shaitan. So Allah sent His Khalifas, His Viceroys, these are the families of Adam and Eve and their children to be lamps. So it doesn't matter what somebody thinks they're the most favorite lamp, they're the best, they're the chosen lamp, is that you give light because lamps give light, give hope, give prosperity mercy, compassion. But you can't be a lamp that gives electricity and just burn people. You have to be luminous, not harmful. So our life is, is to be a lamp. Did you reach towards being a lamp yet? Do you have the ability to be a luminous soul in which you illuminate yourself, your family and your community? Or is you just a, it's a flame that burns people? If you're a flame that burns people, those lamps go to hell because there's all flames down there. So it means our life is to be a luminous soul filled with light and hope and guidance even in the face of oppression. And SubhanAllah that's what people are seeing, they see these poor people being obliterated 
and they just call out to God's name. And the rest of the world who are watching immense oppression, all they can see is they're astonished with the faith of these people. What is this faith? And I must research it and must see it. And it's just it's astonishing that this is the situation. I mean a lamp that never extinguishes, a lamp through whatever difficulty Allah put it through, it still comes out saying, Allahu Akbar, that God is supreme, Allah is supreme. So our life is about that. Doesn't matter what religion people think they are, you have to be a luminous lamp, you have to spread hope, you have to spread light in the face of every darkness. Are we doing that? And have we achieved that? InshaAllah we try. <clears throat> As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah Sayyidi, what do we do when, when part of this ummah is in pain and crying? How do we make the most effective du'as? And what does Allah want from us or what to do in these times? But when you see the immense oppression then try not to oppress yourself. That with what you have of your money, of your time, of your ability and your effort do good. That when one nation, one part of the nation is in suffering, the other part should be doing good and praying. That take your time out and, and be of service, take your time out and feed and give water and food to people. Take your time out and be charitable, take your time out and pray with your family saying that, Alhamdulillah that our condition is good Ya Rabbi and that we're praying and may our prayers be accepted and save those under difficulty. You know Nashbandiya are the caretakers of humanity and every Salatul Maghrib we have Salat uh, the Maghrib Janazatul Qaibeen. Where we pray our Salatul Janazah for all those whom passed away within the last 24 hours. Why? Because of the responsibility of the tariqah to pray for those whom maybe somebody is not praying for them. That somewhere they've been buried, somewhere they're in difficulty, somewhere they're dying and they can't be reached. And at maghrib time we pray the four rakah Salatul Janazah to Qaibeen as our sunnah and in the way of Prophet and it has never stopped. And that's because these big awliya are the caretakers of humanities and the caretakers of the nation of Sayyidina Muhammad And they're ever vigilant and ever conscious of the fact that the nation is in difficulty and that people are living and dying and dying in places that maybe somebody's not reaching to them, seeing them, observing them. And we pray the Qaibeen that, Ya Rabbi reach to them, that this janazah to be is to catch all for all whom are in difficulty and that Allah send those to pray for us in our day of need and in our moment of difficulty inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah uh, While one is able to safeguard oneself during wakeful hours, how can we empower ourselves to shield our dreams? You know, a strong spiritual connection is the shielding of oneself in everything. That when the connection is strong, the muraqabah is strong, the energy coming onto the soul is strong, it's a force. That nazma, that force is all around the servant at all times because the soul doesn't sleep. That's what's essential in, in building our energy because that what you're focusing on is, is eternal. When you do muraqabah you're spending towards your, your eternal reality, you're not spending time on your physical reality. So these are, these are actions that they dress the eternal soul. Every moment in that dress is a moment of eternity. More eternal power, more eternal power, more eternal power until the soul is so powerful it has an eternal shield all around it. 
Whether it's awake or asleep it doesn't make a difference, the soul is Hayyu al Qayyum, the soul doesn't sleep. So that which you do for your soul is your eternal shield 24 hours and beyond 24 hours because when you die that's your ship that takes you throughout all of the heavens. That's what will go on your eternal journey towards Allah That's why when you make that relationship with the shaykh now that's a, a phone number that you'll be calling for all of eternity. You made the connection, you made the con- that's a connection you'll take towards all of eternity that can't be understood what the shaykh's maqam is and what they've reached. And how you've reached towards in their reality to be within their reality, those are things that can't be understood on the earth and can't even be explained upon the earth. But they're giving that opportunity by making the muraqabah, you're coming on board their soul. You'll partake in the activities of their soul and where their soul is connected into the soul of their shaykh to their shaykh to their shaykh to the presence and the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad and that's why we use for dunya hasanat wa akhirah hasanat wa kinadab nar that we use the time of dunya that Allah gave to us to build this immense hasanat of akhirah. When we say, Ya Rabbi we came onto the earth and we spent our time, our money, our efforts to build the relationship with these ulul amr and with these representatives of Sayyidina Muhammad and that was a building towards our eternal paradise and somebody else came and said, Oh my Lord I, I spent my time to you know build this huge mansion and fortress and all of these realities of the earth. And what they achieved of the earth and you see them with these huge palaces that they make but in akhirah is nothing, it has absolutely no value, it reached to nothing. So he says, you used all your time for all of that and but you stayed, it was like a day. Because 80 years in in an infinite line is but like a day. At the end of our lives we'll think that we spent all this time here but at the end of life it's like, I was only here for a couple days. Everything got very short in my life just seemed to be like it was only a few days here. And so that's what you spent your life on versus those whom spent their day and nights and their meditation, their khidmat, their service, their understandings, their prayers, their worshipness and they build an eternal reality that lasts all of eternity. And those are the ones whom Allah has granted mansions in paradises and in unimaginable realities. Why build a mansion and, and all, build all our efforts on this dunya when Allah teaches us, build something for your eternity and that becomes the immense reality immense realities of tariqah. So every moment that we spend connecting that's a phone number and connection that we take for all of eternity inshaAllah to the heart of Prophet As alaikum Shaykh Nurjan Walaykum as salaam How do we make our family and friends believe that the economic and financial system would collapse and make them withdraw money from banks and prepare accordingly? Yeah, I don't think we need to because <laughs> it may not come as fast as people want or as fast as people expect but these are actions that you're not saving the money. So you know, you take your money out, you don't take your money out. It's not about you saving the money, it's about every action that you take to build your soul. Every action you take in faith when you follow the shaykh, I put food aside, I bought some gold, I put some money aside, I did all these things, I took some notes, I went out did khidmat. The real reality is that you're showing Allah you have faith and Allah opens your eternal ship, your soul. So now your ship is prepared to launch and that was important. Not that somebody took their thousand dollars and they hit it correctly. They don't want to take it, they probably don't want it anyways and let it all go to the bank's hands. But what they really lost was the ability to prove their soul and to gain faith and gain the lights of their soul so that when Allah wants to launch the ship it's ready. If their soul is ready to come out and there's nothing there then 
that's the difficulty that people will face when they prepared nothing for that day. When they asked Prophet that, when is Qiyamah, when is Qiyamah, the reply that Prophet has was what? What have you done for it? <laughs> what, what have you prepared for it that you're asking like this, this question? And they said, uh, nothing but the love of Allah and the love for you said, Ya Rasulul Kareem, Ya Habibul Azim. And he said, then you'll be with whom you love. So it means that this is a, a way of what have we prepared for these difficulties. So with these people whom we love we follow their guidance, follow the practices, follow what they're asking from us so that Allah write for us that these people have faith. That's the accomplishment, that's when the power of your soul comes out as a luminous being in very, very difficult dark times, that's what you want. Now do you want everybody in your family to have safely put away their money out of banks? No, I don't necessarily think they would believe you and they'll probably blame you if they get lo robbed or, or they lose it. So you told me to do this and I lost it all. <laughs> but it's, a, it's important that we believe, inshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen bi hurmati Muhammad al Mustafa bi siri Surat al Fatiha. As salaamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life. Our mobile food vans, we have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. As Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh.